At the beginning of uh, the G77, even if you go back, uh, say, uh, during the Bandung Conference in 1955, the idea really basically was to try and help uh, the countries which are still under colonial subjugation to achieve independence. And uh, the G77 did quite a lot in terms of not only just provision of resources, but also being able to lobby at the international uh, level. I uh, do understand that at that particular point in time, most developing countries do not have the kind of clout that the main winners of the Second World War had at the inception of the United Nations in 1945. So here was just a caucus uh, upon which uh, the countries which are still under colonial subjugation of one form or another, Anglophone, Lusophone, Francophone, uh, could leverage uh, in their struggle for independence. And that was really the gist of the founding of uh, the G77 and China. That is uh, really like uh, uh, winding the clock forward because after most of the uh, countries had uh, gotten their independence, then it was a question of uh, you know the famous song, now that we've got love, what are we going to do with it? So now that you have uh, political independence, what are you going to do with it? So again, the G77 came in very handy. Uh, and, and this is now the way they moved to the stage of really serious multilateral uh, negotiations. We had uh, amongst the first meetings held in Belgrade, Yugoslavia, when people like Field Marshal Tito were members of uh, what then became then an aligned movement, which means upscaling yeah, the G77 plus China. Uh, and, and there, a, a roadmap was, was worked out on how best uh, do the countries of uh, the G77 engage the broader international community. So yes, uh, then the debate of uh, economic factors came in. Uh, because, yes, political goodwill could give you the political platform. But here are people who are evolving from a system that, uh, where they were on the periphery of, uh, of econo economic development, of decision making. How do they then take their destiny in their hands, even with the, on a political platform? So uh, economic uh, enhancement or development was then put on top of, as top priority on, on the agenda of uh, the group of 77. Hence, their involvement in pushing for something that later on came to be known as the new international economic order. But that could not operate in uh, a vacuum. So the founding of the uh, of United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, anchored way back in 1964, came, became now a platform uh, upon which the group of 77 could articulate uh, their economic uh, ideas. And I think from there on, they have pushed that economic agenda to date. Well, uh, along that road of uh, economic evolution, uh, there was also the question of how best do you harmonize the various development agendas of of and amongst the G77, because some countries were at different levels of development. That is one. But two, some were in need of certain aspects of development than the other. Let me give you an example. For the countries which were uh, producers of uh, agricultural produce, what we call cash crops, needed a different type of agenda. And that's how they debate about tariffs now came into being. But countries which also were part of the G77, but were, had mineral resources, then they needed a different paradigm to, to articulate their mineral resource extraction. And then there was the other category of countries which were now becoming oil producing, uh, Latin American countries, the Venezuelas, but also African countries like you know, of uh, Nigeria amongst uh, Gabon and others. They also needed a different agenda. So for that reason, uh, a kind of caucuses of regionalism became into play. 
And the region, that regionalism, of course, was then supposed to take the agenda forward. So if you look at what is happening now, I would say it is a continuation of the same kind of like specialization. For example, like BRICS have a very different agenda from what other organizations have. But still, if BRICS want to articulate an agenda that is amenable to their requirements, their needs at the global level, then they still will need the group of 77 to be able to carry the debate at the global level. So I look at uh, these small groups really like branches of, uh, of a main tree, if, we, if the UN is a main tree, but which also needs a bigger branch on which to hang so as to be able to articulate their issues centrally.